in cells. And here's a paper that came out recently just showing that circadian rhythms require daily changes in cyclic AMP. Here are some drugs that will block the production of uh, cyclic AMP. And you see daily rhythms damping out or stopping in, in these cultures. And it was at about this time when I was getting really interested in the role of cyclic AMP in daily cycling that I um, was introduced to a really interesting um, other role for cyclic AMP. And that was that tumor progression, cell cycle division, another cycling um, event in the body, um, depended upon uh, changing levels in cyclic AMP. So you could actually slow tumor progression by uh, reducing, um, by uh, accelerating cyclic AMP production in cells. And so in these pictures here of mice with a glowing tumor, treating them with roliplam could actually slow down the progress, which, um, which actually increases the levels of cyclic AMP, slows down the progression of a tumor in their brains. And so this is when I had a cosmic collision. I was introduced to Josh Rubin, who's sitting right here. <laughs> Josh Rubin is, is an expert in the role of cyclic AMP in the cell cycle and in pediatric brain cancers. So Josh actually sees kids with pediatric brain cancers. And he's a very menacing and, and daunting man <clears throat> who is extraordinarily brilliant and also extraordinarily welcoming. And, and I have to say that the CDI fostered this idea very early on. We've been working together for a little over 18 months or so when we had almost no pilot data to support this idea that I'm going to tell you about. But Josh was enthusiastic, and the CDI supported us to address two questions. Is the circadian clock disrupted in, in gliomas, these progressive tumors that are especially common in children? And can we develop timed chemotherapies, recognizing that normal astrocytes are dividing and keeping 24-hour time? Can we think about time of day as a way of delivering chemotherapies could, to slow tumor progression and minimize the side effects of chemotherapeutics? So I'm going to just show you two quick new pieces of data. What we can do is we can monitor the gene expression in green of genes of interest in individual astrocytes now. And in this case, we're actually studying a cell line that has the properties of an astrocytoma. These are human astrocytoma cell lines. And what you're watching here are something like five days worth of data where we're monitoring individual cells. These data are hot off the microscope. These, uh, literally, we collected these as of last Friday. And what we've noticed in watching these first movies is that the cells we can track now but with the purple color, and <clears throat> we can track the expression of a gene of interest with the green color. And what we've noticed is that as these astrocytoma cell cells come together and form these clusters, the clock gene that we're studying turns on at very high levels. And if you watch the individual cells, their clock gene expression is turning on and turning off, turning on and turning off each day. So if you watch that guy on, off, on, off, on, off, over multiple days. So we were very excited to see that these cells interacting with each other are somehow modulating their circadian clock. In addition, we've developed what we call our high-throughput assay. And the idea here was if we're really going to come up with chemotherapies that are going to work better depending upon time of day, we need to develop a way to screen many drugs uh, at different times of day. And so what we've done is we've taken a microtiter plate, a plate that can hold 96 wells. And I've just zoomed in on a couple of the wells here. And each well contains uh, cells in it, either uh, 20,000 cells or 10,000 cells. And we can look at different types of cells mouse astrocytes, human astrocytes, or these human astrocytoma cells. We can treat them with different drugs at different concentrations. We can look at the role of other drugs that act in similar ways. And what I hope you can see is that these cells are oscillating and uh, keeping 24-hour time. But depending upon the treatment, their oscillations differ. And if we look at different gene expressions, so here we have a gene that turns on during the day, and here's one that turns on at night, we can learn things about how these genes are regulated by me uh, messing with uh, how these cells speak to each other or how they produce cyclic AMP. And so here's some very, very preliminary data just describing data from a cell line called U87 cells, 
where if we look at these cells daily gene expression and each one of these traces is from a single well in one of those high throughput screens where we're looking at a culture of cells, we see daily gene expression, but it's going up very rapidly as these cells are aggregating and dividing very quickly. And normal astrocytes, in contrast, their expression stays low and gradually damps out. We can treat these cells with, with uh, compounds that are normally found in the body. In this case, we're using a neuropeptide, a signaling molecule. And we can actually shift their rhythm so we can take control of their clocks and tell them it's not noon, it's midnight. Is this still In this case, it's BMAL, yes. <clears throat> So what we're thinking about now is that the brain is really comprised of multiple daily clocks that normally need to coordinate with each other. So it's sort of like the atomic timing system. There's the suprachiasmatic nucleus down here that communicates timing signals to other weak oscillators in the brain to get all the functions of the brain synchronized. And under certain conditions, those clocks or their ability to communicate with each other may be disrupted. And so we've seen that astrocytes can express daily rhythms in gene expression. These signals can synchronize to daily cycles. And I didn't show you these data. This cycling is dependent upon whether the cells are, is not dependent upon whether the cells are dividing or not. So the daily clock can keep running and keeping accurate time even when the cells are dividing, which is remarkable. And that these daily rhythms in these cells depend upon those clock genes that, we've, um, that I discussed briefly. And then when these cells are rapidly dividing, we see that they also express daily rhythms in clock genes, but that their expression of these clock genes depends upon how they communicate with each other. And that we can now begin to take control of their timing by using, for example, a neuropeptide that my lab is very fond of called vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, or for tonight, VIP. And we can also see that we can take control of these cells and actually get them to no longer oscillate together. We can desynchronize the cells by blocking cell-cell communication. In this case, this is a compound that blocks electrical connections between cells. So the next steps for what Josh and, and my lab are working on now are we're interested in monitoring how the cell cycle um, changes over uh, the day. Do these cells divide at particular times of day? We want to be able to do this both in a dish and in individual animals. And we've begun to develop tools here so we can watch gene expression in specific cell types in the brain of mice um, in, in real time. And we can study those cells when they're normally dividing and when they're pathologically dividing. And then we want to study specifically how taking control of cyclic AMP levels in, in the animal and in cells in a dish could allow us to um, regulate their cell division and their daily timing. So I just want to conclude with thanks to the people who really do the work. Luciano Marpagan is a talented postdoc who came from Argentina. He brings to us his asado, which is this uh, delicious uh, roasted meal. He has developed all of the techniques that I talked about tonight, and he is just a fabulous collaborator here. And the CDI has, uh, has supported all of his efforts. And to Josh, who is really just a fabulous um, person to work with. We try to get together um, every other week to talk about results that are going on in our lab. Nicole and Aaron are working in Josh's lab. And so we've formed our own Clocks and Tumors Journal Club. And we get together to, to discuss the latest and greatest. And thanks to the CDI for support. <laughs>